everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Carolyn Talks. I'm your host, Carolyn Hines, film critic and journalist. And this is my, my podcast slash YouTube channel, Carolyn Talks, where I speak to film creatives about their work and the industry. And today I'm joined by Yuki Matsuzaki, an actor, an actor writer and director, um, to talk about this thread that I saw him make um, on Twitter. And I just had, I saw this amazing thread and it was just, I have to get into it because he talks about something that is very dear to my heart as anyone who, who knows me knows. I like to, I talk about representation, but also as racism within the film industry, not only in North America, but also internationally, particularly Asia, since that's a, of interest of mine. And for Yuki, he was talking with regards to racism within not only Hollywood, but the Japanese film and TV industry, because he was talking about, you know, stereotypes and um, mis and misrepresentations and misunderstandings of people of various ethnic Japanese background. And so I want Yuki to just um, say a bit about yourself and your career, what got you started in acting and directing, and then what also prompted you to create this threat. Um. I came to the U.S. when I was 18. That was uh, 22 years ago. And uh, I went to New York and uh, briefly stayed there and moved to Hollywood and started my career. And so from the get-go, I, uh, um, I was a minority. I was a foreigner. And uh, I had to go through all the hardships. The, uh, you know, I had to, um, back then I didn't speak English like this. Um, and... Uh, of course, you know, I had to set, uh, I had to get the working status and everything. And that took a long time. Mm -hmm. And over the over this 22 years year period, uh, I explain uh, I, I experienced so much racism um, in the industry. And uh, um, but that was a norm. I, I knew what was what I was going into. I knew the all the, um, the obstacles and all the uh, you know struggles I had to go through because uh, when I look back before I came to the U.S., there was literally no one, uh, no Japanese actor ever uh, made it in Hollywood who wasn't already popular in Japan. You know, Ken Watanabe, Hiroki Sanada, uh, Tanabaso, they were they're all stars in Japan, but uh, um, I didn't see a single person who actually went to Hollywood and made it. So I knew that I was going into, you know, a, a huge fight. So I expected those racism and, and that's why I was able to endure it. And as I was, um, when I, when I started out, um, Asian actors in Hollywood, um, we were all treated uh, the same way, in a horrible way. <laughs> the, uh, we were all, you know, neglected. There weren't any uh, roles out there. And when they do have, uh, it's, it's uh, you know, like a sidekick or very insignificant, uh, uh, you know, characters or unattractive or comic relief or, you know, butt of the joke. And uh, we were, we were all, together we were all going through the same hardship at the beginning and then uh, uh you know slowly um ever so you know slowly the um uh, asian american community asian american actors started to get their uh representation uh they they actually won it they they didn't have it they fought for it and they won it um uh i know um there's a guy, uh, William Yu. Uh, he's on Twitter. He's been fighting for many, many years uh, for um, an Asian American representation. He tweets every morning, representation matters. <laughs> and uh, he actually uh, spearheaded the, the movement called Starring John Cho, which he replaced uh, the you know, existing posters uh, with the uh, face of John Cho. And that was very clever because when you actually saw those posters, you you could you could feel that this actually works. You know, Hollywood has been telling us that the Asian actors cannot be cannot play a lead role. Um, but when you saw those posters, you started to 
occur inside I, um, of, of um, you know, a lot um, of people um, that this could actually work and we want this. And this is actually where I got the idea of, uh, um, you know, mosaics, which I'm going to tell <laughs> later on what it's about. Um, and, and then uh, Asian American actors uh, got their representations, and, you know, uh, they got their TV show, they got finally got their um, uh, own movies, and things started to get more complicated. The, um, I, I knew that uh, um, even as a Japanese actor, uh, uh, even being a Japanese actor was hard enough to make it in Hollywood, but I realized there are a group of Japanese, a group of Japanese actors that are completely um, put to the side. They're, they're not even considered for any of the roles. And they were the uh, mixed race Japanese. And mm. it, it was so blatantly obvious um, um for example when they uh have a, a casting call and uh they were looking for japanese and uh, i have a japanese name but some of my uh, uh mixed uh friends don't have how didn't have japanese professional name and they weren't being called called in because the casting thought the japanese must have a japanese name and the um and they 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 look at them and and you know they assume that they don't look japanese and even i i was treated that way almost on most of the auditions actually <laughs> um uh, you know they they i go in and i'm a very tall guy six foot one and they look <laughs> look up at me like Wait, wait, are you Japanese? <laughs> and then I have this curly hair. And th this look, they, they were telling me that uh, this is non-traditional Japanese look. <laughs> that boggles my mind because I'm like, a stereotype, which I think a lot of people of color, some people of color don't like to, um, to admit is when it, especially with regards in the, in the film industry, Hollywood, white people, have this idea of what Asian people, whether you're from Japan, China, South Korea, you know, Taiwan, Thailand, Hong Kong, you know, Vietnam, that they, they have these preconceived ideas of what people from these countries are supposed to look like because they have everything on based on a Eurocentric idea of, of race. And, you know, I, I cannot blame um, just Hollywood for that, actually. The mm -hmm. reason why Hollywood have that misconception is of course you know they've been putting out these stereotypes for i don't know how many decades they've the very been very beginning from that's what <laughs> years, the hollywood film industry but, so it's like almost from the very beginning yeah the, the um and so and they're repeating it they're they're strengthening they were strengthening they're reinforcing their stereotype by by you know putting out there and watching it and then that, okay that's how the japanese supposed to look like and they're repeating it and so basically they were regurgitating regurgitating this uh, stereotype by themselves. Uh, then at the same time, I, as I wrote on the thread, uh, on the Twitter thread, I wrote about in Japan, they, for, for probably about the same, you know, same, same length as um, Hollywood, they've been completely ignoring the uh, you know, minority representation. There's actually literally no representation whatsoever. Um, you know, sexual minority, racial minority, people with disability, they, 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 just, they just don't cast those uh, minority actors at all. And then when they do cast, it's a uh, horrible stereotype uh, types of characters that, uh, you know, um, a majority Japanese writer just, you know, ginned up in their minds. And uh, as you know, that uh, when majority creators create a minority content, thinking that this would make money, mm. they would do a blatant white savior uh, arc of the story. 
you know, they, they create this uh, minority of victim and they are going through this horrible experience. And therefore, this lead character, my, my, the superhero character, will, will have to come in and save the day. And then and the minority character will go, oh, my God, thank you. Oh, my God, you're such a good person. And they love that story, you know, the, the cheap story arc. And that's what they were doing in Japan. And, and uh, uh, even worse, that even those um, stereotypical minority characters were played by majority actors. And, and that's what they were doing. And so from Hollywood side, they were putting out all these stereotypes, horrible racist stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And from Japan, they were putting out this fake imagery of homogenous Japan. And so they were assuring each other that there were there are absolutely no mixed Japanese. Yeah, that's the thing. Like when I watch, I, I you know, I would say when it comes to Hollywood, I think one of the very, very, very few Hollywood productions that have shown that Japan is racial, not only racially, but ethnically diverse, and that you have Japanese people of different um ethnicities you have people who are bi biracial japanese who are biracial with japanese and white Jap um you know asian or i should say japanese asian because japanese is not an is not um an um it's not an ethnicity it's, yeah. it's a nationality right mm -hmm. so right. you can have you can have a japanese per a person of japanese nationality who is um japanese asian and white black and black and asian southeast asian and east asian and one of the very few films that I've seen that have actually shown that was, um, believe it or not, Fast and Furious 3, Tokyo Drift. You know, they had side characters that you, that you like, just like you can look at them and you can tell that they are of like varying um, racial ethnicities. And uh, the thing with Hollywood that, and this is something I've been talking about so often lately, is that Hollywood fails to realize that you can have people who are biracial who are not just black and white. You know, you can have people who are Asian, but of two different Asian ethnicities. You can have a person who's of East Asian and Southeast Asian ethnicity. You can have a person who is Black and, and Asian ethnicity, you know. And even if you are Black, you can have a person who is of different uh, Black um, ethnicities. You can have someone who's um, Caribbean, who's half, so like a parent is from like Barbados, where I'm from, and a parent who's Ghanaian, you know. And like are from South America, like South America has black people. So like there's this whole thing where Hollywood doesn't like to recognize that ethnic, like people, we talk about representation, but for me, when it comes to representation, which is one of the things your, your thread was talking about is ethnic representation. It's not just race representation, it's ethnicity. Cause I think it's important to, to make these things come because like they do matter to us as people of varying ethnicities. And so when we talk about representation on screen, I don't want to see just representation for black people. I want to see proper representation of people from Nigeria, people from Ghana, people from, you know, from Barbados, people from Jamaica. I want to see proper representation for all of our, um, all the varying degrees of what it means to be a person of color. I, you know, I'm more open towards um, wider, you know, like I'm open towards like for example I'm open towards Asian American uh, actor playing Japanese if it's like a you know like a Fast and Furious like a, it's a, if it's a fiction and doesn't mm -hmm. involve the the identity issue mm -hmm. uh, of of that specific people you know when when the the when the story is about their identity that's when it's become it becomes very crucial to 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 uh, to put someone from that group of people into the creatives yeah. of that thing, and then consult with them um, throughout, and then try to cast the actors of that um, minority, a group of minorities. But uh, you know. Uh, but if it's just the you know like action films or um, nothing that involves uh, the identity crisis, then you know I, I'm more open toward mm -hmm. that. I don't. I'm not actually a, 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 the the a, pu a purist when it comes to you know like if you are Japanese, uh, uh, you can only play Japanese. Yeah. Yeah, I, and also especially like. It, it becomes a problem when the actor who got cast has no respect for that culture and he would uh, 
and if they don't do any uh, homework, that's when it becomes a problem because that character, that, the actor, um, may put out this horrible characters of, um, you know, those uh, those uh, people. And, and for example, you know, it, it's once I uh, worked on a, a comedy show. Uh, it's a comedy it's TV series. And uh, uh, they were looking for Japanese scientists, and the, the breakdowns uh, for that role, those roles specifically said, um, must speak fluent Japanese. Those are mm -hmm. Japanese scientists, and the scene takes place in Japan. And uh, I, you know, I uh, I went to the audition, and I saw many Japanese actors and and uh, Japanese American actors, and uh, I got the part. I got the uh, the scientist part. And because they they said that this, these characters must speak Japanese, I was expecting the uh, my scene partner scientist also you know speaks mm -hmm. Japanese. And then I went to the set the day of the shoot, and when I saw the call sheet, I saw I I recognized the guy because I've seen this guy's commercial before. Where he was speaking, uh, he was speaking a gibberish Japanese, and and I was I was shocked um, because you know like now I have to do a scene with this guy who was speaking gibberish, and and he was trying to um, hide that you know hide the fact that he doesn't speak Japanese, and. At the rehearsal, um, actually before the rehearsal, I went, to, went up to him and, and then asked if he wants to rehearse the scene with, with me. And I, I actually offered him that, uh, you know, I can actually, you know, coach him if, if, he, if he wants to. And he said, no, I'm good. And then we went to the set for the rehearsal, camera rehearsal. And the scene started. I, I said, um my line in Japanese and he looked at me and said and then and cut and then directors and producers they they didn't they weren't aware that he what he actually spoke was gibberish and uh it, it, it was it was horrible <laughs> and, and, and after the camera rehearsal, I had to um, tell him that that's not okay. I went, I went to his uh, trailer and knocked the door and I went in and I told him that I actually, um, you know, know uh, that he doesn't speak Japanese. I mean, it was obvious after that rehearsal. And so what I did was I wrote down um, his line phonetically on a paper, a piece of paper. Yeah, but he can practice it, and so I, I told him that I have this. Uh, I know you don't speak Japanese, but I, I have this for you, so uh, you can use this and memorize it so that you can actually we can have a scene in Japanese. And <laughs> he took an offense with that. He's uh, he's uh, 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 he he said uh, they don't care. American audience don't really care. And he said to me, um, you know, this is just a three minute scene. And I know it's important for you, but for me, you know, it's just a scene. <laughs> no, you see, the thing about that is like, it's, it's disrespectful on, on so many levels. Cause like, to me, I'm not an actor, but like to me, as, as, as a person um, from the audience, I would be upset if I knew that someone that what I'm hearing isn't the actual language. But this and this is just me because like I get upset when I watch um a productions and um, um North American productions and people who are supposed to be from Car the Caribbean are speaking in this bastardized version of a, what they assume a Caribbean accent is and it's like it's offensive on two things because there is no particular Caribbean accent because each island has its own accent and dialect, right? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, but they they kind of like use this one, this one, I, this one bastardized version of an accent to not only represent all Caribbean people, but there is the issue that they don't care enough to actually learn, just learn that we are diverse, you know, like, like 
each country is individual. And that using your, 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 your story is that, to me, that shows such a blatant disrespect and also laziness. Uh, for, on the- for his defense, for his defense, it, this is more than 10 years ago. Yeah. And that, back then, speaking gibberish Japanese wasn't that unique either. There were many actors who were doing that, and but but that's the problem because it's it's a problem even at ten years ago, even twenty years ago. Because it's like it, it to me, I'm not not only picking on this actor, but just like to me, it just shows that there is such a gross disrespect of people from different countries. Because he's like saying, "Oh, American <laughs> audiences won't understand." I'm like, there are Japanese Americans. What are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, this guy is Japanese American, <laughs> right? So, like, how you saying? Oh, Americans will understand. I'm like, so you are. You're, if your parents speaks Japanese and they watch this, you don't think that they'll be offended that their son didn't even bother to learn a base, a, just a few lines in 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 proper dialogue. And then it's like, I again, I know a lot. To me, I know a lot of people will look at me and say I'm being hypocritical. I think it too deeply, but for me, it just means a lot because. When it comes to how people, I how people are treated, are shown on screen, it does affect how yes. we are perceived in real life. And like to me, these yeah. things do matter. Like to some people, it's like a throwaway line. I'm like, that's not a throwaway line because that one scene would have meant the world to someone who said, "Oh, like, oh my God, they're actually speaking proper, like proper Japanese," you know. And especially if it's coming from an Asian actor to an Asian American actor to boot, you know, it's just like. Uh- so back then, they thought the uh, um, gibberish Japanese was funny. And to, in order to make it funnier, funnier uh, they were repeating, uh, many of them were repeating a Japanese word, ah, so, uh, which, which means, oh, oh, really? Oh, really? But it sounds like an asshole. You know, like that, they, they knew that they, it sounds like an asshole. They were repeating that uh, to make it sound like, you know, this Japanese guy is just saying ass, asshole many, many times. And that's what he was doing. <laughs> so, so, of course, you know, if people saw that, if people see that, they will feel that he's speaking a funny language. And, and if, you know, of course, he's not, he's Japanese American, you know, so maybe it doesn't affect him. Mm-hmm. But it would affect us, <laughs> you know, since that character is Japanese. Um, so, um, you know, after I confronted him um, and, you know, I, I offered him the, the pay, piece of paper and uh, um, he, he said, American audience don't care. And I said, we do. Uh, Japanese audience would understand that he's speaking in gibberish and uh, uh, we do care. And n- the next thing he said really stuck in me. Um, he said to me, of course they do because Japanese are racist. <laughs> I was like, what? Wait, uh, why? why ask him to speak Japanese from you know a Japanese character is is racist um and he gave me an example a hero heroes the TV series heroes as an example that uh, um the Asian Americans were playing Japanese and became became a hit show and uh, I, I told him that that is true uh but the cast on heroes actually were speaking in Japanese my friend was a language coach coach mm-hmm. on that show and they practice, they all practice it. They listen their recording and they practice it. And she was on the set checking their uh, lines. And so uh, I, I was shocked. Uh, and then I asked him why he doesn't have any respect for Japanese culture, even though he's Japanese American. And I told him, I gave him an ultimatum, you know, I, I gave him, I told him that. Okay, so you don't want this. Is that mm-hmm. right? Then I'll just throw it away. Is that, is that okay with you? Then he snatched the paper from me and you know, just nod, gave me a nod to, to get out of his trailer and I got a trailer. And then he actually practiced it. He, he practiced line. Even though it wasn't, um, it wasn't 
perfect or anything. It was, you know, of course, of course he only had like 10 or 20 minutes and he changed some words using Google translation. That seemed like, and then, but he at least tried. Mm. And so I have to give him a credit for that. <laughs> well, you did, you did, you did work for him, work that you were not being paid for as an actor because, like, it's not your job to be translating. Oh, you know, I mean, it, it is for for your coworker. It, it it is our it is our job as a, a minority actor to actually do that as well, because uh, because because the uh, the current representation it, when the current representation is completely malformed, then you know, our job is to work as much as we can to actually reshape that and mm. make it into a healthier shape. And I've been doing that ever since I, I came to the U.S. because they were, they, they were, you know, putting out all these stereotypes. But the problem is, when white writers write Japanese characters or make that character to, into Japanese, they have a specific reason for that. Mm -hmm. They want to use that, use the fact that this character is Japanese and he's unusual, unusual. Like he's, uh, he, uh, so because this person is Japanese, he does something unique to Japanese and that will move the story forward because mm -hmm. the main character will, will have to experience that. And so when they make characters uh, Japanese, they normally try to make it obvious that this person is definitely not American. Okay. That's why they go into this um, like really heightened stereotype character, characters. Mm -hmm. And the problem is, so we can see that on the script, we can see that, okay, this they're trying to go for that uh, you know, like a, a stern sushi chef trope, you know, like, uh, uh, get out, uh, get out from my restaurant. You know, they, they, they were trying to go there. And, so, and it, but thing is, if we, tr when you go to the audition, they were looking for that type of actors, the, the actors who can deliver that stereotype. But in order to fix that, we have to somehow get that role first. So we, we had to actually play their stereotype, in, but in the realm of, okay, so this is, let's say this is a healthy representation. Yeah. And let's say this is their, what they have. We try to go here. <laughs> this, the place where it overlaps so yeah. that we're actually playing... Um, uh, the probably the lowest uh, lowest quality of the healthiest healthy representation, but it's still in the realm of uh, their stereotype. Yeah. Um, but what, just so what I was saying that it, it's not your job as an actor, what I was referring to isn't that it's not your job to advocate for um, representation or for thing. What I mean is like in the instance like that where like you are providing translation, I meant literally that it should be the oh, yeah. job of the writer no. or the director to hire someone to create the correct translation. The problem is they don't care. That's that's what, that's the thing, right? <laughs> like they don't care enough to hire someone because <laughs> I know other Asian actors in Hollywood, and they've and they we've and I've spoken to them about how when they are looking at lines, and the line is supposed to be something, whether it's in Mandarin or Cantonese or Korean or or Japanese, they'll be like, okay, I'm reading this, and this is not accurate. And they are, you know, like if, if whether it's a for a role they got, even if it's just for like the um the sheet, the script for an audition, they 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 have to translate everything themselves into this language. And um, to me, it's just like it should be the job of the the writers and the creative staff to hire someone. But the thing is, is like it, Hollywood is still at that place where they're still expecting, you know, people of color, like actors of color, creative, um, to do all of the work with none of the um with no because even if they do all of that work they translated this now for the for the for the casting directors they now have a translated edit and then guess what the the cast this person still doesn't even get cast but the director and the writer they now have a tra fully translated you know um version of their script which they at the beginning didn't care enough to make sure that whether what they were reading is whether what they were creating was correct or not 
they uh and especially um within you know the east asia um japan china and korea they especially don't really care about japan because they japan is known for not vocally complaining mm. when something um some you know, uncomfortable things happen and when when uh, films depict depict uh films depict japan horribly um if if that's actually china or korea they get angry they they try to boycott that film or tv series yeah well they will boycott <laughs> they will, we will but not turn it japanese <laughs> they don't they eat it up uh mm -hmm. they, because they're so used to they they were so saturated with this uh, stereotypes hollywood put out there for many decades and then they also have no um yeah, uh, no, uh, they don't really care about representation at home either. <laughs> the the many. Why do you Japanese... think that is? Why do you think? Why do you think? And as and it's, I I honestly don't think this is just a a problem with um Japan either. I think this is also a problem with I think across just across the world in Southeast Tourism. Asia, South Asia, like like when it comes to representation of especially of ethnic minorities. If you see them, it's like usually very stereotype words, like for South Korean um, content, like for South Korea, if you have like um, my um, people who are of South Asian or Southeast Asian um, descent, those characters are usually very small and like as in small, like they're, the roles are small and they don't get much screen time and they're stereotyped roles, right? Same thing for black people, like the very few black characters that turn up in a South Korean drama, <laughs> are stereotype racist stereotypes and it's happened up to uh, just as recent as last year with two shows one was rookie back rookie and the other one was a show called penthouse season season three which i refused to watch because of the racism that was um, depicted about black people i see it with um chinese um dramas in particular like if there is a black person it's like very rare but it's a stereotype role. Are they are when they are are even if black people aren't there you can tell that they're characterizing black people right you know they do they do perform cultural appropriation of black aesthetics and black culture and for japanese it's kind of the same way like when um for japanese dramas i they there's still like stereotype depictions of people of like the very very few you see you know that it is still a a, a character a stereotype of like people from of a different uh, minority like there's only one show that i know of that has a black actor um and it's itake ni koishita and i think i have to i have to watch it i haven't watched it yet but i'm like oh my gosh they have a black actor in the main cast and it's amazing but why do you think for, for, for japan in particular they have they're so what's the word i don't want to say reticent but like they they're, they've accepted accepted it for what it is instead of like actually saying like this is wrong we need to do better uh, because they brainwash themselves, <laughs> they they have been putting out this fake imagery of homogenous Japan, and they're they, that's those are the only things they were eating. So they they made themselves believe that that's how Japan should look like. The um, even though you know the actual Japan is more diverse than that, and then also the, the structure of Japanese entertainment industry is a closed door, a clo how do you say you know, like a, a closed door shop. The uh, mm. like they they didn't really have the uh, auditions. They just offer the role to uh, to actors, and then they don't even have contracts. Okay, the contracts aren't the thing in Japan. Um, actors don't have contracts. Um, uh, many times they don't even know how much they are getting from most of them. Actually, most wow. of them. They, uh, Japanese actors are not um, informed of how much payment the uh, agencies were getting uh, are getting from the gig, um, and so the structure structurally, agency owns actors, mm. and the actors are agencies' employees, and this agency gets jobs from uh, uh, producers or uh, you know like studios or networks. And they want to preserve this, this, um, you know, relationship kind of ecosystem of how it works. Yeah, eco eco ecosystem. So, because of that, um, 
they didn't want um they they wanted their talents to play those minority roles uh, they the instead of hiring someone from you know outside of that ecosystem mm-hmm. uh, then then no one can make money no one no one's making money in this eco- ecosystem and, okay. and that's how and also they realized that the, for example when straight actors play gay characters i was going to ask about that <laughs> they 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 realize it's actually bankable they they um because if the actor plays uh, plays the gay character, and if if that role gets many awards, that will translate into box office or ratings. And they so they figured uh, the casting straight actors for gay roles are much more profitable than casting the actual uh, gay actors. At the same time, um, they have this uh, uh, culture called uh, boys love. The, uh, yeah, the, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you next, because that's becoming that's like the genre hasn't existed for decades. But I would say in the last five years, particularly in the last three years, it has like become like such a big subgenre of um, of dramas not in, in Japan and um, and South Korea in particular. And it's picking up more with international audiences like Thailand has been doing it for a while. But I find like for like it's, it's getting way more traction. And it, like I do watch these shows because like the latest one I've been watching is um, Kaya Yaku. and I did wanted to ask you about that because like the thing with me is like is is you it's good to have the shows because they're showing they're showing that you know rep, re- representation for people in um, the LGBTQ community because there's other dramas. Um, there was one that I watched last year, uh, my androgyn- androgynous boyfriend, which is about a male character who. Um, who is androgynous that like he dresses, um, you know, in like what we would classify as quote unquote feminine clothes. But the thing is, is like all of these actors are straight or the, as we know of, they, we don't, they haven't come out as being gear otherwise. So like you, we assume that they are straight and like, is, I wanted to ask you about that because like, I wanted to know what your, not only your thoughts about for other people in the industry, what is the, what, what do they think about this? Because I can see it actually rather than helping people in the lgbtq community stigmatizing them further because as we said you are not seeing people from these communities performing in these roles right if, if they care about representation sure but they don't they, <laughs> they were the um, yeah bl uh, um genre was a business they 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 figured they could make money out of it and uh, the main audience, uh, main buyer of that genre were uh, adult uh, uh, females. And so, and so they wanted to cater towards them. Mm. And if you want, if you see how they advertise those uh, BL dramas is like, okay, this pretty boy, a pretty boy from this idol group and this pretty boy from this idol <laughs> group, they're going to kiss like, yeah. <laughs> and then they're going to have such a, uh, messy, uh, you know, like sex scene, and they they try to advertise advertise it like that, mm-hmm. and so they completely um, made it into a, a merchandise. And the thing thing is uh, because j- there were no actual um, representation by gay actors, even the gay community in Japan w- wasn't aware what they were getting. Those were the only thing they were getting. And actually, many of them found solace in it. Mm-hmm. They, they were sure that it is okay to, to love another, uh, another guy. And so it's complicated because, you know, like, they, they, were, they, they were, if they didn't even have that, before that, they didn't even have that, and they were in the dark. Mm. Uh, but now, because it's been publicly, you know, they've been publicly showing uh, uh, two guys, uh, two, you know, uh, um, men loving each other, um, they were assured and they, they, they liked it, actually. I mean, not all of them, but because they weren't sure, uh, sure of what they were getting. And then... About a um, year and a half ago, this guy, this guy uh, who uh, who is an actor 
in Hollywood, uh, this this person spoke uh, spoke out on on Twitter saying that's wrong. That's me. Yeah, that's, <laughs> oh, that's you. I was, I was just gonna be. I was like, who? And like, which of that? What is wrong? You mean having the straight actress play the gay play the gay characters? Is that what you mean? That that's what was wrong? Oh, oh I I I I um I posted. I I just criticized them for uh, stealing representation. Okay. The uh, I criticized them that uh, they were um, they were using the the. Okay, they were using, they were still in representation and they were trying to bank it, bank from it. Mm -hmm. And I actually explained to them that how they were deprived of representation and how they were actually systematically uh, removed from that uh, uh, genre. Uh, mm -hmm. They were removed from the get go when they. Uh, in Japan, it's very common to um, write a script after they cast. So they cast, oh. first. yeah, they cast first and then write the script. So uh, from the get go, of course, they don't even consider casting uh, um, gay actors. So what they, about for like the um, the manga adaptations? Uh, there are so many, <laughs> but uh, I mean, there... no, I mean, like, I mean, it's a process the same for like because like, oh, you said, like, they have write the, the script they... after the cast for like that would be for original content. They, 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 they have... do the same for the um adaptations, they have no incentive to cast gay characters, they don't feel any responsibility to cast them, and no one uh, vocally complains. So that's that, mm. you know, they they just felt it's completely okay to do that, and then it was considered that way for a long, long time. And then I posted this thing and it, it, blew, it blew up on Twitter. I, I got like, I don't know how many uh, retweets I got, probably like 6,000 or 10,000 retweets. And then they realized that they were getting, um, they weren't actually treated uh, right. Mm. They were actually discriminated they didn't actually see the chain until someone said, you actually chained, can't you see that? And then they, um, then from there, the, the, it, it started to change. People start to complain when, when uh, you know, those majority actors steal their representation on Twitter. And that's when actually started to change. And then finally, um, I think last year, last year, they they made a, a short film called uh, um, uh, what's what's the English title of that? A fish with. Uh, anyways, so th they they actually cast a transgender actress for the main character of this short film, which is a transgender woman. Mm. And this was revolutionary in Japan. And uh, I watched the film and the representation was phenomenal. The, uh, the uh, you know, like when the actual minority person plays a minority characters, they don't play victims. They, they're just living themselves, right? And then, uh, and, and then when actually it's, the story is actually made by another uh, minority person. Of course, they they aren't they they know what that the, they've been getting this uh, white savior treatment for many decades. They don't want that either. They want what they want to create is that character overcoming the problem instead of being saved by someone else. Yes, majority. And then this is very important because. When you, when you are saturated by that imagery of white savior story type, you, you start to look down on them because they can solve their problem themselves. Mm -hmm. They will need our help. Then so they actually are denigrating those minority groups by creating this white savior story. Uh, and then even audience will think that, oh my, oh, that's so you know, horrible. Uh, uh, they, they feel sorry for those minority characters. And for a long time, 
to make audience sorry for them, uh, they thought it's a, it's a great thing, great way to actually get rid of uh, uh, all of the discrimination against them. But what they they it may worked on that uh, on on some level, but uh, at the same time they actually created another imagery that those group of minorities actually need help of majority to exist. Therefore, they actually put putting them down. Um, but if the story is about them actually overcoming the problem, oh, it no. actually changes. It actually changes when you watch the film. You notice that the, all the people who do who's doing horrible thing, majority of people are actually the horrible ones. So it changes the game, and then you experience those horrible things through the uh, the eyes of this character. Mm -hmm. So you will learn that these things aren't, uh, you know, these things are uh, um, this discriminatory, mm. and. It, so it changes, it completely changes how you look uh, at them. And that's why the representation is very important. Um, if you watch films like that, then you will start to have respect for them. And because you, you, go, you see what kind of hardship they go through and they see, you see them overcoming those hardships. And so you will respect them. And you would try not to do those horrible things, you know, those mine, uh, majority characters did in the film. And so it, the white savior story, they, it makes them feel better. It, it makes them feel good yeah. that they saved the day. For this yeah. representational story, they actually learn stuff. Mm. They, they the learn thing. the mistakes. And so it, it's, it's a huge difference. No, it is because um, like my friends and I, we talk about this all the time because we we talk about how when you when we are watching a film, whether it's about um whether whether if it's created by a black person or an Asian person or um, another person of another um gender minority, for instance, um when we watch it, and if at the end you're uh, the question you're asking is who was this made for? That's when you have a problem. When I say that, that's like we, you can have films. Starring black people, created by black people, but then at the end you're just like, is this story really for a black audience, or is this you're telling a story about black people for the white perspective? Because there is a difference. Because you can tell when um when a story is made with a specific audience in mind, because like you can tell, like for instance, as you're talking about the the white savior stories, like that's something that happens with like with um, stories featuring black people a lot. Either you have the white savior, or you have black people. Or you have like black people doing what we call the magical Negro um, trope, or you know, or the mammy trope, where it's like we are here to help yeah, you help you, help you <laughs> succeed, whereas the whereas the black characters get left behind. And the same thing happens with people from the LGBTQ community. Like black people, um, like people from the LGBTQ community is like they're usually always like the sassy best friend, and they're like you know they don't really have their own stories um, art. And Asian, and I think Asian, a lot of, and recently what I, Hollywood has started to do is like, they kind of intertwine all of these identities into one character. So you have a, a character who is, who's black and LGBTQ, or you can have a person who's Asian and LGBTQ. And they're like, oh, we have our, our minority di di um, representation all wrapped up in this one character, but then they all perform the same kind of stereotypical roles, which is like, oh, helping the white uh, pr protagonist like get their get the get the love interest, get a job, help them through school, you know. Or if it's a horror movie, sacrifice themselves while the white person continues to make stupid decisions and live. Whereas the person of color, the person from a minority, is the one that sacrificed and gets killed. Like we like forget it. We have like terms for that, you know. Like you have the um. There's I think the trope is the is I forgive me from saying it wrong, but I think it's called the um, bury. Oh, it's called bury the gays. Whereas like, you know, gay characters are usually like they get killed off, right? And like for black for black uh, for black characters in like horrors or what like, black black characters get killed off uh, leaving leaving way for the white for the white um characters to live. And like for and I think for 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 even like we're talking about the BL, like for a lot of these BLs, as you said, many most of them, if not all, most are written by white by by women. 
most of the stories are written by women and they're written not for people in the LGBTQ community, but they're written for usually straight women, you know, for cis women. Uh, not, nowadays, yes. actually, it's more uh, diverse than that, actually. Uh, nowadays, there are, um, yeah. um, there's this one uh, popular manga uh, about a lesbian couple. Mm. Uh, that that uh, of course I, I don't know that sexuality of the the the, the author but uh, it's been praised by lesbian community for the very um, authentic. Realistic. I, I don't like the authentic. Well, well, authentic. I, they very um, engaging uh, portrayal of them. The the reason why I can't use the word authentic is authentic has two meanings. One is depicting the, those group of people as they are in real life. And the other thing is uh, this purest form of this, this stereotype. Mm. Like, for example, when, when Hollywood says they, they were, look, were looking for authentic Japanese actors, what they were saying is we want the purest form of stereotype. Yeah, the, our perceived idea of what a Japanese is, we want that pure representation of that. And so that's why I can't use the word authentic very mm. much. The um, it's it's tricky. It's a tricky word. So I uh, remember, like when he, when the guy uh, that I met, I had a horrible experience with um, yeah. on the set. When he said they don't care, uh, American audience don't care. What he meant was white audience. White Americans, yeah. White Americans. And then they, they use that uh, excuses all the time, not just him, actually. I hear it everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like when, when I start to point out stuff on the set, wrong stuff, uh, they a lot of time they say, oh, yeah, but, you know, this show is made for American audience. You mean white American audiences? Yeah, but they don't say that, but, you know, that, that's what they, may, what mm-hmm. they mean. And that actually shifted. So... Back then, uh, they meant white uh, American audience, but now it's actually American audience as a whole, a lot of time. And this is where the things get really complicated. So uh, we Asian have Asian hate issue in the US, right? Mm-hmm. And we were, we were fighting so hard to, to get the stigma of, you know, like Asian. Um, and we were trying so hard to get our representation on films and TV series so that they will stop considering Asian as others. The, um, so we are fighting for that. And American audience now accepted Asian representation and they welcomed it and now they, they like it. And the Asian community in America, they fervently support uh, those uh, Asian representations on films. And here the things get complicated. So now the main audience includes uh, those people who love Asian representation on films. But what they like, what they prefer to have is Asian American representation because they are Americans. They, they are American. I can under, totally understand that because they have this horrible problem in front of them, you know, Asian hate. Mm-hmm. And then like, when they do the, these racial uh, racist caricatures on cartoons, like you know Apu from Simpsons or um, you know uh, Asian characters from South Park, it affects the minds of children, and then Asian kids get bullied at school. So you know, like we we uh, Asian community in, in America has a actually acute problem that they have to solve. That's why they were fighting so hard for Asian American representation. And here's what things get complicated. It's okay, it's totally okay for them to play on Asian American characters and the story arc of their heritage. Farewell, or um, uh, there are so many, uh, Minari, the Minari. Minari. Yeah, they, they're, it's a story about them, themselves. themselves. They're, they're playing themselves and they're representing themselves, okay? And that's a very good thing to do, I think. And uh, the second, uh, second kind of representation is when they just cast Asian guy, uh, but they don't really go into to the, his actual heritage or anything. He's just there as a regular American. 
you know, like uh, uh, office community you see everywhere. No, there's, you know, like there's an Asian character, and but he's just, you know, a general American. And that kind of depiction, that kind of representation is also extremely important. As I told you that uh, minorities are normally considered uh, less than majority, like second class citizens. Um, in order to take that stigma away, the audience has to get used to seeing them on screen just being uh, regular Americans. And then when that becomes a normality, um, it affects their uh, subconscious and then they will stop treating minority as, le you know, as less than themselves. And then this is how I think the US got uh, uh, same-sex marriage passed because you start to see those uh, um, gay couples on, on TV series and movies and, they, and people get used to it, you know, like, and then uh, that's the power of representation. It goes throughout the world. And then especially in, from in the US, you know, like it has huge impact on how people would think. And, and then, 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 you know, people will stop um, uh, objecting same-sex marriage, you know, at, at the end of the day. And so this, and that's the thing. That's 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 something that I, as a critic and as a journalist, I I, I always try to stress because I always, like people say, oh, you know, it's just TV, and I also have to tell people it is not just TV. Like TV has a, a significant impact, real world impact on oh, yeah. politics. It has real impact with how we are treated every day on the street. You know, it impacts like how we're treated at school. And it is, it's even for fictional shows, like they're still like learning tools because like, again, like we're, like, we, like we're talking about the way how people of color, people from minorities are treated on screen, are written, directed, characterized, portrayed on screen does affect how we are, are viewed in, re in reality. Like you're talking about Asian hate, like, like we know like so many women have been targeted, harmed and hurt and, and unfortunately killed because of stereotypes, because of how women, Asian women have been portrayed on screen. Like that does bear uh, that, like how that, what happens on screen does bear how people perceive Asian women on screen, you know, like if they're dehumanized on screen, people in real life are not going to see them, is not gonna see their humanity. You know, like how black women are treated on screen is how we are treated. Um, is how we, how we are treated in real life because people think that that what happens on screen is what is supposed to happen in real life, and it is true, especially for like living in North America. I've been living here twelve years, and I still have to tell people, and I talk about it constantly. Is like we, we face so much racism and bigotry in real life that when it does that, when we are shown as like just as beings not worthy of respect and of being um, considered and grace on screen like that does affect us in real life and like as you're talking about like these the, the, the it's so important that hollywood and all film industries whether it's japan or, or europe or um or south africa like it matters like like film industries do have bear responsibility like directors casting directors you know, writers, even the actors, they bear a bear responsibility because you have to say representation matters. Yes, but like the type of representation matters too. You know, like you can't just say use it as a, like, to me, like I don't see representation as just as a blanket statement. Like there are, spe there are specific aspects of representation that mm -hmm. need to be done correctly as well. So, so and, and then, so this is where the things get complicated. So the first kind of representation for Asian American community, Asian American actors were representing themselves and their heritage, okay? Second one was just playing regular folks. The third one is a tricky one. When the role is not American, but Asian. That's, and then this what is type where, of Asian? Because like Asian is like, He's, Asia is such a big person. Let's, let's, Asia say, is let's a say Japanese. And then there's okay. like. Let, let's say the character is Japanese from Japan, mm -hmm. living in Japan. Okay. If you apply the, the, the logic of representation, then it becomes that uh, uh, it's, it's supposed to be, uh, um, of course, it's, it's supposed to be, it's created by uh, Japanese filmmakers and then cast Japanese actors, right? But Hollywood films. Hollywood films are American films, not Japanese films. Mm -hmm. So therefore, from the get-go, 
it's made in America, even though the character is Japanese or story arc is about Japan. And then as I, as I, that's the reason why I talked about the main audience has been sh shifted over the year is because now American, uh, American films uh, audience includes the people who crave for Asian representation. And when the film is made in America, if it's, if it's uh, you know, like Hollywood films, um, they of course want to cater towards that. And they have this immediate problem of Asian hate and they want to solve. And of course, the, from the get-go, the creator filmmakers, uh, producers are normally Americans. Then they try to go for Asian Americans. And that's, I think that's a great uh, effort they're making. But you know, nonetheless, it's not specifically of that um, ethnicity, you know, like Japanese uh, mm -hmm. or nationality. And this is where things get complicated. So because Asian American uh, filmmakers crave for Asian American representation try and try to solve this Asian hate, and they want to have this huge impact on the student, they want to have this, they want to have their own status in the industry. Because of that, uh, Many of them actually prefers prefer uh, casting Asian American actors for Japanese roles, or even um, or even British. Like they, 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 like it's becoming quite the trend in Hollywood to cast British Asian actors. But, but again, you know, it's it's okay mm -hmm. if it's something like uh, Tokyo Drift. Uh, most of them aren't Japanese, by the way, cast. Uh, because it's not about identity, it's uh, it's an yeah. uh, action film, and it's okay. But the things get more complicated when the story actually involves Japanese identity, and it's portrayed by uh, non-Japanese um, Asian actors. And the thing, and but thing is, we don't have Asian hate in Japan, so they don't have an acute problem to solve, right? And in the U.S., they have a acute problem to solve, Asian hate. So I can actually understand that uh, this solving the problem has much bigger impact in the real-life society. And, of course, I'm Asian guy. I'm Asian guy in the U.S., and I, I want them to solve this Asian hate. I want them to have this status in the industry. Um. And, but the thing is, there are Japanese actors in Hollywood, like myself, and, uh, uh, um, and the Zainichi actors. Zainichi is a, a Japan-born Korean. Okay, they, they were born and grew up, up in Japan, but their nationality is still Korean. And it's called Zainichi uh, people. And there are Zainichi actors in, the, in Hollywood as well. And we... Uh, Japanese actors and Zainichi actors try to we, we, we see those mal representation by the industry and we are striving to, to fix that uh, but then when they when they prefer Asian American actors to solve uh, to, to solve this, these problems of Asian hate and stuff like that we lose our chance to represent ourselves. And but when, when things like that happen, actually, because people aren't aware, uh, Asian American community, uh, 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 they, they weren't aware of that kind of problems. Like, like, you know, on the Twitter thread, I talked about how mixed Japanese actors have absolutely zero representation on even in Japan nor in the US and there's absolutely no roles for them anywhere right and then um, and the American um, films Hollywood films rather rather cast Asian American actors than mixed Japanese actors because they um, Asian American actors look more Japanese to themselves they were completely kicking this uh, a group of minority away, even though they were they were um, discriminated, and then mm. 
but because Asian American community uh, wasn't aware of these problems, like neglecting uh, mixed Japanese um, completely whatsoever, and taking away some chances of uh, Japanese actors or Zainichi actors to actually represent themselves, who who actually live in the U.S. Um, and trying to you know like achieve their uh, representation. When um, a film or TV series cast Asian American actors for Japanese roles, the the Twitter feed actually light up. They praise the decision. They praise Hollywood for being open minded, and they praise that uh, uh, you know the Asian filmmakers' effort of getting Asian American representation. And what they aren't aware is that that character was Japanese, and so. If you actually achieve, if, if you try to overwrite Asian American representation over Japanese, it becomes a problem <laughs> somehow, especially when the material involves the identity again, you know, like because um, if the actor or even the filmmaker doesn't actually understand the, uh, the actual identity crisis, because they are not actually of that group of minorities, it becomes a character. It becomes untrue uh, representation of those sub minority group of minority group, uh, Asian characters inside of Asian uh, uh, character, Asian and Asian American characters as a whole. And so it's very tricky. Um, but once again, Asian American community has has an acute problem of Asian hate. And in order for all of us to succeed, uh, we have to help each other. We yeah. have to push each other forward. And when that kind of, like for example, you know, when that kind of things happen, like casting Asian American actors for Japanese role, and this Asian American actors are, are let's, uh, let's say Korean American, um, people try to actually not to see that problem because they're helping each other. They're trying to make this into a huge force. So by losing one Asian American representation means a lot, you know, because there aren't many Asian roles out there to begin with. So, um, so when that happens, people try not to see that problem. Hmm. No, it's true. Um, because an example of that is, um, or I should say one of the most recent examples of that is um, Raya and the Last Dragon. Um, like people are saying, well, it's amazing for representation because they're like, first you have, it's the first Southeast Asian um, story being told by um, by Disney. And people are saying, oh, we, like, we have our first Southeast Asian princess and stuff. But then when the casting was announced, I, like, I spoke to a lot of friends from like Southeast Asian community and Asian community, East Asian community as well. We were looking, I was just like, hmm, this is a problem because you say Asian, but then you, you it, there's still specificity to it because like, they were saying, oh, it's Southeast Asian. They're promoting it as Southeast Asian, Southeast Asian. Then when you look at the voice cast, predominantly East Asian. And then also like um, this, we haven't really talked about it, but then there's also like colorism as well. Like, we, it, and colorism does tie into like how you're how you're talking about um, Hollywood and, and white people have a very specific idea of what Japanese people look like. Colorism ties into that because like they're thinking the person has to be light um, light skin, you know, with a, a certain bone structure, certain hair te hair texture, and all that ties in. Like for and for Raya, I I spoke to some friends and we were just like. All of the characters from one, the, the animated characters are dark skin, Southeast Asian, but the people voice in them are all light skin, East the, Asian. Um, so, so we, we um, Asian community in the um, in America or in around the world who's who is involved in Hollywood, so we form this force together, with the force of this Asian American community as a whole and we they, they 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 try not to you know like put anyone um like it, try not to exclude anyone from mm -hmm. anything because they want to preserve this um 
the you know force and that's why that 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 happens they they feel it's okay for them as a whole because if we go into the, the like extremely specific uh form of representation then many of them would lose their jobs they cannot work on those uh, Hollywood blockbusters. And there are many out there for a, that involves a, a Asian uh, American characters or Asian characters. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> we, we want them to have more jobs. And so we try to protect each other and then defend each other and try not to see those problems. And that's why that, that happens. No, I, under, no, I understand that. Per, I understand that completely because as we like, that is one of the main problems because there just aren't enough roles being created. And it's not that the roles are don't even necessarily exist because there are, I'm, there, I'm sure there's hundreds, thousands possibly of scripts about Asian characters of varying, of varying Asian ethnicities and nationalities just waiting to be produced. You know, like people have I mean, scripts you know, people have these stories to be told, but Hollywood just, the thing is, is Hollywood isn't producing them. And I think, and that's, and that's the problem. But then I, and I, and, and like, for me, it's just like, I completely understand like for, for actors, it's so, it's, and um, it's so hard in the industry, just getting these roles and then getting good roles, you know, like we're talking about, like making sure they're not stereotyped. And those are even fewer, you know, you have the Asian roles, but then you have the roles specifically for Asian women and roles specifically for Asian men. And then going further into that, that they're not stereotyped and that they're just ordinary. Yeah, the second people having a, a second little ordinary. So like, it's like this whole thing is just like step by step and it's like very small and it dwindles as it goes further down. But then like for me, I always have to, I, this is also my perspective as a critic too. I understand the perspective of the of the of actors, you know, of wanting to like you're you're, you're saying okay, like it's a role and this is very few. I have to take it, but then I'm just thinking about the impact on audiences as well. Because the thing is, is like, what do you think? A lot of people and like we, people always say, oh, it's, uh, it's Hollywood. It's made for um for American audiences. That's not true because Hollywood's main ex, one of Hollywood's main uh, one of America's main exports is film and TV. The it's it's not it's it, it doesn't stay in America. You know, it is it, it's exported out, and that affects like when we see people from outside of America, people outside of North America see this, and then when you have the Hollywood touting representation matters, and people outside of Hollywood say, "Does it really?" Because I am not seeing myself <laughs> reflected on screen. Okay. And right? this is this is where the the part where I said Japanese people don't claim, uh, complain comes back. So. Um, the Hollywood but the thing makes... is not just it's not just Japanese people like it's like like <laughs> I'm from the Caribbean like Caribbean be like that's not like you know that's what I mean that's how I I think from a very I think say I think being and one of the things and not only just being immigrant but being a black woman as well I think from a very global perspective because I'm always thinking of like these varying things and like like yeah you like for you you're saying like um like Japanese people don't complain but the thing is is like they're like that that doesn't only apply just to japan like but the thing is like yeah, people i think the, a lot of it has to be because people don't they, expect better so they think that they have to accept what they're given um uh, many years ago um i was speaking to this uh extremely uh successful producer um he's someone who's made hundreds of block blockbusters and he was talking about the importance of catering towards Chinese market. Now it's, it, was, it was getting bigger, bigger mm -hmm. and bigger. Now it's much bigger than America. But And then he was talking about the importance of um, the representing them on films and TV series and because China is a huge market. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I asked him, because I asked him, wait, wait, why? Do you, when you if you think if you think that way, why didn't you actually do the same for Japanese? Because this person actually created a film where he portrayed Japanese characters poorly, and then he told me that uh, because Japanese don't get mad, it does not affect box office. It does not affect ratings. So, but for a China. 
it affects rate, uh, it affects box office. Mm-hmm. And for Korea, they boycott. And, and but Japanese people do that. And so, and then basically he's saying he doesn't feel the necessity of, of actually catering towards Japanese market because they just eat it up anyways. And then they, they so again, you know, even when even if they feel uncomfortable or they get mad, they don't vocalize it, they don't say it out loud. So they don't they don't hear it. Um yeah, so you know, it seems like uh, the in the uh, Hollywood consensus that uh, uh, Japanese characters are probably one of the most insignificant <laughs> representation. <laughs> I mean, some people who love Japanese cinema, you know, they, they try to actually, uh, you know, uh, put the more respect into it, mm. uh, like someone like uh, Martin Scorsese or Clint Eastwood. You know, they like uh, Clint Eastwood when they when he made Let Us Resume, he was amazing. Um, uh, it was written by a, a Japanese American writer Iris Yamashita, and uh, we we uh, I loved the script, and then, and then I loved the film, and how I loved how Clint Eastwood actually, you know, didn't t- um, make uh, made us into didn't make us into you know characters stereotypes. They, he portrayed Japanese as just people, Japanese soldiers. And that's, that never happens. <laughs> that never, ever happens in Hollywood. They, um, but, you know, Clint Eastwood is not Japanese. Yeah, and, but he was able to do that because he paid respect. He paid tribute and he tried to be, he tried his best to actually make it um, he tried to uh, let us represent us instead of, you know, superimposing his understanding of representation. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it depends on the uh, how the director or creator uh, producers would think um, if they feel that they would need to actually pay tribute to 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 Japanese culture, and then and then. But the thing is, I wrote in the Twitter thread as well. They love Crossover films, okay? They love Ozo films, and uh, but the, these people were more than these they, when they were making these amazing films. It was it's more than fifty years ago, okay? <laughs> and the um, they love these kaiju films. Um, but they were from 70s and 80s and even at this moment Japan Japanese energy industry still doesn't have any minority representation so when those Japanese cinema fans or uh, uh, you know those people who love Japanese cinema when they try to pay tribute to those old Japanese cinema Japanese uh, films they go to actual um the second way, the bad way, bad one, bad authentic. They go to the this purest form of authentic, not the Japan as is now, because what that's what they saw in those Kurosawa films or other films or kaiju films, and they want to recreate that to pay tribute to Japan. That's why when they create Yakuza films, when Hollywood creates Yakuza films, it becomes you know, the, it becomes totally non-inclusive. Yeah. They, that's why they completely exclude uh, mixed Japanese from those films, uh, Yakuza films or Kaiju films, uh, because they are actually trying to pay tribute to those old Japanese cinema, which is like 50 years old. And what they have to understand is that the modern modern Japan doesn't look like that, and so by doing that, by paying tribute to that and trying to recreate the same imagery, they're trying to actually pull us backward. The um, it's almost like you see all those horrible depiction of African American characters from you know all these uh, Hollywood films, and then. 
and then let's say Jap Japanese filmmakers are so used to that seeing that, and he, you know, he tried to pay tribute to that. It's almost like that. That's what what's happening now. Oh Actually. yeah, I I I I totally feel that because even in films that are like you say modern, they're still not only if even if the characters aren't racist char um I can't even say they're not racist. It's like they they're they're made the the characters are created with the perception of seeing Japanese people in only one way, you know. And then the characters the characters are like one of my I absolutely abhor it is how like you do this you introduce a character of of a, of, of of a different ethnicity just to kill them off and like you're okay. speaking yeah, because we're and we're talking about Japanese characters and like one of my favorite actors is you know Yuki Sanada and the end of um, I know Avengers exactly. Endgame I tweeted about this I talk about this constantly because it it boils my blood I, I that was one of the very few instances in the cinema where I cursed out loud because I was so upset. Because I was like, how are you going to bring Hiroyuki Sonata? <laughs> bring him on! Just the, and, you know, it's a prop. Yeah. It's like a, he's like a, you know, he's used like a prop. Prop for... Yeah, him, for and all the, him and all the other Asian men that were that were there, because they're, they're Yakuza, so like they're with him, and like him and his entire crew got slaughtered. And it happens with uh, Japanese characters a lot, in particular if you're, like, especially in the action genre, like they bring on these um, these men, and they're like, you're Yakuza. This is all we see you as Yakuza. And then they, you're just no, going to like to, to prop up again the white male character. Yeah, it's a convenient thing. You know, like um, uh, it's a white savior trope. You know, like uh, you go into this uh, uh, the community of noble savages, but you mm -hmm. don't realize they were they were noble until you, you, you first of all, you look down on them thinking they're uncivilized and you, for some something happens and you are forced to, to join them. And through the, uh, this experience, you realize they are actually much more spiritual and and the better than your uh, former life, and then you try to fight for their freedom. That's the, the, the you know the white savior trope, and they love this story, uh, this story arc. They're repeating it over and over and over and over. Last Samurai, The Outsider, you know, like they just can want to know they deserve better. They they. So they, they love this, okay? And then um, until um, I, okay, once again, tweeted out and explained to the Japanese a Twitter uh, uh, verse that the, how the white savior story works, I explained that uh, step by step, just like I explained, you know, that thing. And now they understand it. Um, but uh, now Hollywood is trying to mask that white savior story arc with Asian American characters. They still do the exactly same thing. A noble um, uh, Asian American character going to the uh, uh, you know like a, this primitive Japanese community and and see that uh, unfair treatment of something, and then he tries to solve it. He, uh, she in the lesson of the ten rings. <laughs> but the thing is, again, the main audience is America. That's why they feel that they they want to make American audience feel better, and I get that. Um, but you know, at least you know they should be aware that uh, that's what they've been doing. You know that uh, it's 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 changed. Mm -hmm. It's now uh, it's Asian characters, but still those yakuza Japanese are just you know used as scenery their dead body uh, bodies are just scenery to make you know their story forward move their stories forward um and the japanese people are not aware of that either <laughs> mm. but that's that's the thing um, so like, I, we're gonna wrap up now but i definitely want to have you back because i want to talk about your film mosaic street just to talk about the, that film in particular and also your work on other projects so um you know, like uh, when I explain about the Asian American representation, there were three types, right? The Asian American representation itself, just regular American uh, uh, representation, and Asian representation. Yeah. The second one is the key. The second one, the second one is the key. The uh, portraying as just regular folk, regular folks. And actually, I'm what I'm trying to do is that now because 
there are no mixed Japanese or minority Japanese, sexual minorities or racial minorities. Um, yeah, uh, there's no representation for them in neither Japanese cinema nor Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. By putting out there this thing that has that kind of representation as a, just a norm, it's nothing special for them to be mixed, nothing special for them to be uh, gay, lesbian, transgender. They're just being themselves and story has absolutely nothing to do with their with them being minority. Mm -hmm. If you are used to that, then it will affect the subconscious of both sides. Just like how Asian Americans played regular Americans, if those minority, Japanese minorities are playing regular folks, people who see that would have a significant impact on their, uh, how, they, how they see those minority Japanese. It becomes a norm. And that's why I made Mosaic Street, where, uh, where, where diversity is already a norm in the society and people don't, don't really talk about it because it's just regular things. And, and, and when people watch that thing, they would forget that all, main, uh, all three actresses are minorities. You, you go into like two minutes in and you completely forget that they're minorities. You were more interested in the storyline. Mm -hmm. And that's my goal. That was actually my goal to, to change, to let them experience that, to let them experience that uh, just, just as how uh, Asian Americans achieve their status of you know, regular Americans by playing just regular Americans, we can actually do the same for minorities, uh, like uh, sexual minorities and, and, uh, and the people with disabilities. If, they, if we let them play just regular folks and we can actually change the society. And also on my case, I'm try trying to change the industries. And that's why I made Mosaic Street. When I said that I wanted you to come by, it wasn't that I didn't want you to talk about the film here. It's just that I also wanted to have a more in-depth discussion about the film itself, just like the plot, because like that's one of the things that I do with my podcast is I, I like to go in depth in, into films and into the stories because I, I, I'm already <laughs> invested in the story of Mosaic Street because I want to know what happened to this girl. I'm like, so wait, if she <laughs> not want to kidnap her, her. I need to know what happened. And, and the whole, like the whole discussion about the chapstick and the lip balm, the difference between chapstick and lip balm, that was intriguing to me because I, in my head I was thinking, but I say lip balm, I don't say chapstick because to me, chapstick is a brand. So I was having this whole internal dialogue while I was watching the scene. So that's what I mean is like, I didn't want you, not I didn't want you to talk about it, but for me, I was just like, ooh, I want to really get into the film, into this short film itself. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, it's, 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 I feel kind of um, itchy when I, when people actually uh, praise the script because <laughs> I only spent four hours <laughs> It's a, good, it's a good script. I'm like, I'm invested in this story. You, 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 you knocked it out of the apartment just for it because I want to know what happened to this girl. I'm like, what? Lisa. I'm like, tell me more about Lisa. Um, <laughs> so. uh, yeah, yeah. You know, like, I didn't want to start from the, the actual, you know, that's actually a scene from, you know, one episode. I do have a story arc for that, uh, uh, for that episode. But uh, again, you know, what I wanted people to experience was that this experience of forgetting they are minorities. Mm -hmm. and, and that's why I wanted to grip them right away from the get-go, um, grip their attention on the storyline, not the fact they are minorities. And mm -hmm. uh, it seems like people are, uh, people loved it. So that's, that's great. I, 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 you know. No, for sure. Because I was like, because I was going to ask you to like possibly come back and with the cast, if possible, to talk about it. Because it was just like, I need to know more. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, if you could actually interview the uh, 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 Kota, Ami, and Emma, um, I mean, that would be wonderful. And actually, uh, the director Shiho Sa, uh, Shiho uh, Fukada, she's a uh, uh, she's an extremely successful uh, documentary director. This is this is her first narrative, by the way. She's oh, really? never shot a narrative ever. <laughs> oh, because <laughs> the the the, the con um, conception of Mosaic Street is actually me uh, contacting Shiho San. And uh, I just asked her, hey, do you want to try making a narrative? 
I, I just want to take this thing Mosaic Street and, uh, you know, I'm paying and uh, uh, do you want to just try it out? You know, we just, why don't we have some fun? And she was like, okay. Well, yeah, in that yeah, case. Why not? My, in that case, if we can get it set up, I would love to talk to all four, to all four of them, the three actresses and the director. And I think that would that's like that's like my that's my my thing right there. That's like just talking to directors about their films. Like I love to like and like discussions like this. I always just love to go in depth because to me, like I I, I just love knowing how directors and writers and actors like just just create their craft and like also the experiences in the industry because. For me, I, as not only as a critic, but also as just an audience, like I want to understand like the full scope of what goes into creating these stories, right? Because like there's so much, so much work that goes into it. Like that's just my way of showing appreciation to it. It's like, I, funny, but uh, because I started from nothing, hmm. I, I when I went to New York, uh, somebody uh, when I was staying at the youth hostel, and somebody broke into my locker and stole money, stole my money, and I had to register into a homeless shelter. And I, 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 because I've lost all my um, savings, um, I started to perform on the street in Times Square. And I started from Times Square, street performer, to where I am now. So I experienced, I had to experience everything. You know, like I had, I did many student films and everything. And through that course of my career, it seemed like I've achieved some skills to, some skills that require to make a film even though i've never actually went to a film school mm. and, uh, uh, but it came to me naturally because i had to go through everything for, uh, one by one and then yeah i mean you know i i, I i'm a dialect coach for uh, both english and japanese i'm a, a performance coach i'm a, i can do casting i can write for some reason for some unknown reason <laughs> um i i don't really direct much um only sometimes I can help producing it. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I made a prop, by the way. I made a prop, you know, the guy, um, you know, the, 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 the waiter, waiter did some card tricks thing. Yeah. Um, the, I, that, the thing is actually not a coaster. <laughs> I, I made it. I, I made it. That was a cool hat trick. <laughs> yeah. the, um, you know, we can talk about in-depth thing, but the, uh, that, that card trick actually has a specific uh, effect in the storyline the um yeah I, I don't want to give them any spoilers uh but uh, i wanted to draw audience attention away from this one specific character mm -hmm. that's why i actually did everything i can to to make them see something else and then that card trick was one of the distraction trick <laughs> to to uh, misdirection of, of the uh, he's character. suspicious. <laughs> so and that's why yeah it's a, it's a misdirection basically and then <laughs> it, that's yeah uh, when I wrote that thing Kartrick pe uh, the people didn't understand like wait why is he doing Kartrick here <laughs> and I had to tell them actually this Kartrick doesn't actually have an actual meaning but um, I mean this that character uh, the um, Meister he was a pickpocket. Mm -hmm. He was a former criminal, a uh, former convict. Um, he served his time. Uh, he was actually captured by, uh, he was actually arrested by Takanori. He served his time and got the second life after mm -hmm. he, he got out from prison. And because he was a pickpocket, now he does magic tricks at this cafe mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for the customers. And then, and then uh, that has actually a specific meaning to it. But anyways, the, um, yeah, yeah. So, so, you know, like, People didn't understand that at all. When I, when I wrote the script, like, why is this here? <laughs> yeah, and thank you so much, Yuki, for taking the time to talk with me. This is you know, it's early morning in, in Tokyo, so I appreciate you taking the time for talking to me and for making the thread, because I think the, the Twitter thread was very important um, because like, we do need more people to be talking about this, um, like issues within the film industries, whether it's in North America or in Japan. Like, I think it's important to, for people within the industries in particular to talk about it so that people know that you know what you're talking about. You're talking from your experiences and like people need to know that those within the industry want to see change. And it's important like, because like to me, cinema is global. Like we, like we have to, I think it's a responsibility of like everyone involved to like talk about issues so that 
they, if things are not only better for audiences, but also for the people like you within the industry, because you want to work on on sets that you feel safe and respected on, you know, you want to know that you're entering onto a set where the director and the writers and your co-workers and crew all respect you and respect each other. And I think part of that is education about, um, about racism and bigotry, you know, and xenophobia and stuff within the industry itself, so, so because it can't, nothing, nothing can, nothing will change if we don't like start, if we don't keep telling people that this is what needs to change. Mm, very true. I think it's very important to actually say out loud. Mm -hmm. And, uh, um, you know, like when you go, when you get some, uh, when you have some power to actually deliver that message, um, and then when you see people discriminated, and then when you have the power to let people know what's happening, then, uh, you know, that's what we have to do. You know, like that's our responsibility. If, especially if you're a minority and if you, especially if you are, if you went through the same problem, it's, uh, it's I feel it's selfish to, uh, to harbor that wealth or popularity or whatever, and then try not to take a risk because you don't wanna, uh, uh, you don't wanna affect your own career, even though you see those discrimination which you experience. I, I, I don't think that right. That's right, you know. 